Being sued is never fun, trust me, I know that one all too well. It brings out all the pettiness in everyone, and you know that if you've had to get a judge involved, then it's gonna be messy. Video games aren't even exempt from the courtroom either, as time and again they've been called to the stand to defend themselves. Not the actual games, obviously, although the concept of somebody yelling, you can't handle the truth at a boxed copy of Second Sight is pretty hilarious. From embarrassing copyright squabbles concerning Great Ape to one man's crusade to monopolize the use of the word edge, astonishment just doesn't cut it as a descriptor for some of the most absurd disputes to have entered a courtroom. With this in mind, I'm Jules of WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 most absurd lawsuits in video game history. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number 10. The Romantics vs. Activision 70s rock group The Romantics, despite giving Activision explicit permission to cover its track What I Like About You in Guitar Hero Encore Rocks the 80s, decided that suing the publisher over its use was a good idea. The band's argument, if you can call it that, stipulated that the cover was too similar to the Romantics' original and could cause confusion for its fans. As any rational human being would do, the band's members sought to have Activision forced into pulling this installment of Guitar Hero from store shelves. This offensive went down about as well as Josh Brown trying to punch out somebody, and the case was thrown out like the limp top model lookalike he is. I mean, I mean, it was. Number 9. The Olsen Twins vs Acclaim Entertainment Acclaim Entertainment's series of games starring the Olsen twins, including such woeful highlights as Mary, Kate and Ashley, Girls' Night Out, came to a thankful end in 2004 when the publisher cancelled the series amidst its steady decline into financial ruin. The twins, through their production company, thought it best to sue Acclaim for what their lawyer described as a blatant abandonment of the girls' brand in video games, which had flourished and subsequently been run into the ground by Acclaim. I'm sorry, but did their lawyer ever look at the reviews these Identa Kids games got? If they thought that a slew of more twos and ones out of ten than Rich gets on Tinder was a great thing, then they are f***ing deluded. Whether Acclaim ended up forking over the combined fee of almost $500,000, but given its non-existence today, the outcome in this case hardly matters. The important takeaway that does matter is that there were no further installments for the Olsen twins in video game form following the case's conclusion, and that can only be deemed as a positive outcome. Number 8. Gate 5 vs Beyoncé as proven time and again, celebrity-endorsed video games tend not to do so well. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some that break that trend, but for the most part, it's cash-in shit. Enter Superstar Beyoncé, a motion-based dance title developed by Gate5 that would feature the music star in a major capacity that never came to fruition. Having already sunk a reported $6.7 million into the project, Gate5 received the devastating news not long after that Beyoncé had abruptly pulled out of the project on a whim. Gate 5 promptly countered by attempting to sue Beyoncé for $100 million, on the basis that her pulling out not only put people out of employment, but scared off a potential financier that was ready to invest in the project. The lawsuit came to a close when both parties agreed to an undisclosed settlement, meaning that sadly, we'll never get to bust a move alongside Beyoncé. Oh dear. Number 7. One Russian Gamer vs Bethesda Here's the sad case of one Russian fellow who sued because of a three-week binge on Fallout 4, which had apparently ruined his life. He lost his job, he lost his wife, and his social life to the post-apocalyptic RPG, even going so far as to forget to eat. With all this turmoil, he sued for the grand amount of $7,000. That's not much for your wife, mate, but okay, aim small for a greater chance of success, I guess. Nothing more was heard of this lawsuit, which probably means that he finally came to his senses. We'd like to believe that the whole thing was a hoax and that nobody is this foolish, but then again, given the subject matter of this very video, that's clearly not the case. And by the way, did no one tell him that Fallout 3 New Vegas was better? Actually, no, don't, he'd probably be dead. Number 6. No Doubt vs Activision Another inane lawsuit involving a spat between a music artist and Activision, only this time the point of contention involved the former's dissatisfaction with their portrayal in Band Hero. The Gwen Stefani-fronted act No Doubt took Activision to court after it discovered that avatars of its members could perform songs other than its own, a feature not outlined in the contract they signed. Activision responded by countersuing, stating that it was publicly known that avatars could be used in this fashion, essentially running the rebuttal that No Doubt should have done its f***ing research before signing away its members' digital likeness. Mere weeks before a trial was due to commence, a settlement between Activision and the band was reached. Given that the offending content in question remained in-game as is, Gwen and co likely received a tidy sum from Activision, and it's funny how some extra cash can change minds, isn't it? Number 5. Tim Langdell vs The Games Industry 
Edge Games founder and CEO Tim Langdell, intent on monopolizing the use of the word Edge in video games, bit off more than he could chew in 2007 when he decided that getting into a legal debate with EA over its use of the word in Mirror's Edge was a winnable crusade. Bear in mind that this was after Langdell had already managed to have popular iOS game Edge removed from Apple's store and the reason why Soul Edge had to be renamed as Soul Calibur in the West. So not petty at all then, right? In October 2010, four months after Langdell filed a trademark infringement lawsuit against EA, a settlement was reached, resulting in Edge Games surrendering several trademarks containing the word. Following the result, EA spokesman Jeff Brown said that, While this seems like a small issue for EA, we think that filing the complaint is the right thing to do for the developer community. Well, fancy that. EA has a heart after all. Number 4. Universal Studios vs Nintendo now, Nintendo might be a household name the world over today, but in 1982, not so much. Following the successful launch of its now legendary Donkey Kong in arcades, Universal, keen to get in on some of that explosive popularity of video games, began sending cease and desist notes to Big N and its licensees. Universal claimed that Ninty's oversized ape and the game's features amounted to copyright infringement on King Kong, stipulating that failure to either remove the game from sale or purchasing a license from them would result in the film studio suing the pants off this small Japanese company. Refusing to back down, Nintendo faced Universal head-on, and thus a court date was booked. In short, what came next was the total humiliation of Universal. Not only did the court rule in Nintendo's favor that at best Donkey Kong could be considered a parody of King Kong, but Nintendo's representative in court pointed out that Universal didn't even hold the rights to the latter, leaving it with no legal leg to stand on. As further insult to injury, Nintendo was given the right to seek damages from Universal due to its cease and desist nonsense. Take that, you big twat. Number 3. Every Case Involving Jack Thompson Prior to his permanent disbarment in 2008, Florida-based attorney Jack Thompson represented something of a nuisance for the games industry. Whenever a violent video game, especially of the rockstar kind, arrived, Jack was there. From Grand Theft Auto and Bully to Manhunt and even Mortal Kombat, Thompson had locked horns with the industry's biggest players numerous times in the past in an effort to get such filthy smut removed from sale or banned outright, belting out unsighted, unsourced claims about the dangers they posed to anyone who would listen. Not one of Thompson's short-lived crusades against violent video games ever ended in his favor, itself speaking for the absurdity of the claims he made. Eventually, the Florida bar said enough is enough and sent him pack in. Number 2. Lindsay Lohan vs Rockstar Rockstar once again found itself on the receiving end of controversy when Lindsay Lohan accused the studio of using her likeness without permission in Grand Theft Auto V. Now, we've all seen the comparison image in question, and while superficial similarities exist, that's all they are. Even if Rockstar's intention was to satirize Lohan with the character, GTA V is wholly a work of fiction, rendering the entire debate moot. As if there was any doubt, the New York County Supreme Court dismissed the case despite Lohan's claim that the depiction used her signature peace sign pose and other trademarks. Boy, howdy, how could such a strong defense be shut down without a second thought? Oh yeah, because you didn't invent peace, you f***ing dull loaf. At number one, Nintendo vs Blockbuster. Back to Nintendo, but this time, in a weirdly evil-sounding move, they once tried to eliminate video game rentals for everyone. And when this couldn't be done thanks to US copyright law, they decided to just target one outlet, Blockbuster. Now, as a means of replacing old, worn-out copies of game manuals, Blockbuster would make photocopies, a practice that it would soon learn, thanks to Nintendo's probing, was illegal. Blockbuster had the law on its side as far as rentals were concerned, but copying intellectual property? That's a big no-no, even if the content in question was nothing but a series of arbitrary instructions. Rather than run the risk of racking up huge legal fees, the case was eventually settled out of court in Nintendo's favor. But it was nothing more than a token victory. The Big N had stopped Blockbuster from photocopying its manuals, but rentals continued to flourish. At least until digital media came along a decade later and achieved Nintendo's ultimate goal for it. You're welcome. Gosh, can you believe that that person said that about that particular video on that entry? I sure can't. Huh. But you should like, share, and subscribe below anyway. And also, the people who made this video, they're right here. Go follow them and give them some love. Also, there's more content, probably above my head. Check it out. Or don't. 50-50.